Good afternoon. Now, this is the turn to talk about nouns. Remember that in one class we were talking about adjectives? Well, today we're going to talk about nouns. Uh, take a look at this graphic. The definition of a noun is a basic element of a sentence. That means that a noun in a sentence is quite important. That means that in every sentence you're going to find a noun. When we talk about nouns, we have to talk about kind of nouns, the singular and plural forms, and in this part, we are going to talk about orthographic rules. And uh, this is a very special topic, irregular nouns. So let's gonna start talking about kinds of nouns. Let's go on, kind of nouns. When we talk about kind of nouns, we have to take into account two groups, concrete nouns and abstract nouns. Concrete nouns are those nouns like a people, places, things, or animals. That means that this is a group of words that you can see, you can touch, even you can smell. For example, people. When I say people, we can mention in this group my father, my mother, my sister, my students, me, Maria, John, any word that means people. Other example in this group is places. In this group, we can mention, for example, a school, university, house, building, and many other places. Another example here is when we talk about things. This is a very large group. This is a very, very big group because you, you can mention marker, clock, window, door, chair, book, etc. And finally, another group that we can identify here is when we talk about animals. Very simple, right? Cat, dog, elephant, giraffe, so on. Now, abstract nouns. This group of nouns is very special because in this group we mention objects or things that you cannot see, that you can't touch. In this group we can mention ideas, concepts, feelings, emotions. For example, love is a very good example for this group because you feel love, but you cannot touch love. You cannot see love. Different from lover, right? For example, um, tired. Tired is a feeling. You feel tired, but you cannot touch that feeling. So remember, concrete nouns and abstract nouns. It's time to talk about common nouns and proper nouns. This is the second part of this lesson. We can have common nouns and proper nouns, referring to people, places, things, or animals. In common nouns, we can have student, university, cell phones, and supermarket. But when we talk about proper nouns, it's because we are talking about a specific noun. We are giving a name to someone or something. For example, Peter, Agustiniana, Samsung, Caruya. If you see something in common, is that all these nouns, proper nouns, start with a capital letter. 
The first orthographic rule that I'm going to explain is when the noun ends with a Y. Look at my both examples, lady and monkey. These two nouns end with Y and Y, but there is a small difference between of them. The first one is that here you have Y consonant, but here you have Y and a vowel. So pay attention. In this case, you are going to change this Y by I E S. And here, you only add the S. Why? Remember, here I'm going to change this Y by I E S because I have here Y as a vowel sound and before the Y I have a consonant. Here I have Y as a vowel sound and before of it I have another vowel. That is the rule. I'm going to repeat the rule. When you have Y and consonant before, you have to change the Y by using I, E, S. But here, because you have a Y and before you have a vowel, you only have to add the S. The second orthographic rule that I'm going to explain is when a noun ends in S, S H X C H or Z. Let's gonna make some examples. Here, for example, the noun bus, which is the plural, plural form of bus. You have to add E S at the end of the noun. Buses. Right? Let's gonna have an example with S H. Bush. When I form the plural, I add E S. X. For example, box, fox, many others. Boxes. CH. Watch the plural form. Watches. The last word is a word that students don't like. Quiz. Plural form. Quizzes. This is the rule about adding ES at the end of the noun, but in some special cases. When the noun ends in S, SH, X, CH, and Z. Let's gonna have a look for rule number three. Now, orthographic rule number three. That is when you only have to add a S at the end of the noun. Studio, video, tomato. As you see, these three nouns end with a O. In this case, very simple and similar to the Spanish language. Studios, videos, tomatoes. And this is the part that many people don't like, the exceptions. I identified three common exceptions, live, wife, shelf. These three nouns are in singular form. What about plural form? Take a look. Lives.
wives. Shelves. The only solution, memorize them. Now, in order to finish this wonderful topic, irregular nouns. Hmm. We have three different, different groups. The first group is, for example, when we say woman as a singular noun, but when you talk about plural, you don't say woman's, no. You say women. Men, plural form, men. Another common noun, child. A child, plural. Children, another one. Foot, one foot, plural. Feet. The last example, tooth, plural form. Another group of irregular nouns is a special group because these nouns are always in plural. You are going to see these nouns in singular form. For example, pants. You don't say pant, you say pants. The noun is in plural form. Another one. Pijamas. You don't say pijama. Glasses. But I'm not talking about the typical glass of water. No. I'm talking about the glasses that you have to wear sometimes. Glasses. Here we have the last example. Nouns that are in singular even if you need them in plural form. Take a look. Ship, deer, fish, moose. So if you are going to say many ships, uh, two sheep. You don't add a S, that is impossible. This is a rule. We have some nouns that they are going to be in singular even if you need them in plural form. Deer. Three deer. Many fish. You don't say fishes. And finally, two moose. Now let's gonna do an exercise. Pay attention to this text. I study in an important university in Bogota. There, I have lots of friends and teachers. My best friend is John. John is very intelligent. He is the best student in the classes. Today, we have two quizzes, so then, I'm very excited. Let's gonna underline the nouns that we can identify. And let's gonna analyze if we are talking about proper nouns or common nouns, and if it is the case, if it is an abstract noun or a concrete noun. I. I is a noun of people, remember? I study in an important university. University is a noun of place. In Bogota. 
So here, I'm talking about a place, but this is a proper noun. Bogota is a name of a city. So this is a proper noun. University is a normal place, is any place. So it's a, it's a common noun. There, I, once again, have lots of friends. Friends is a noun, talking about people. And teachers. Teachers is a noun of people. Teachers and friends are common nouns. My best friend. Again, friend is a common noun and friend is a noun of people. Is John. John is a noun, but in this case, is a proper noun. John, again, proper noun, is very intelligent. He is the best student. He is a noun, right? A student is a common noun of the classes. Classes is a noun. Come on now. Today we have two quizzes. Quizzes is a very particular noun. Remember the noun that the students don't like. I am very excited. I is another example of a common noun. Do you identify an abstract noun? Yes, maybe. Today is an example of abstract noun. Today is a noun, but you cannot see today. You cannot touch today, remember? So today is the only abstract example that we have here. Let's gonna continue practicing with some examples. Thank you very much for your attention.